Hello everybody and welcome, my name is Ursa Ryan and today I bring to you a game that should be a lot of fun to play. I've played a lot of games recently that have been very, very tough, difficult modes, very aggressive, very warlike. Today's game is one of the combinations and play styles that I have found that I deem to be one of the most effective and broken play styles in Civ 6 at the moment. And more importantly for everybody, it involves Rough Rider Teddy, the alter ego and unnecessarily disused compared to Bull Moose Teddy, who I think everybody loves because of the crazy yields on the map, the science, the culture, it's all brilliant. No, no, Rough Rider Teddy is one of the most broken sieves if you play him in a very particular way, and today I'm going to be showing you that tactic. Now, I could well have made this guide with Greece, I could have made it with Georgia, but I decided to make it with America because, honestly, I don't think people talk about this strategy enough and how powerful the Roosevelt Corolli is. That, that is a word. <laughs> That's certainly a word. Now you can play this strategy on pretty much any map. I have just in order to make the scenario a little bit more fun, I've put myself on a standard continents and islands eight player map of this level. It's deity, it's standard speed, and I have barb clans, heroes and legends, and secret societies modes all turned on. You don't need any of these modes on to make this strategy work. The strategy still works absolutely fine without them. These just make it even funnier. So we're going to absolutely do that. Remember if you want to play along with this game and use it as a bit of a guide to teach you this style of playing then feel free all of the details were just on screen there but more importantly I keep all of the mods and all of the save files that I ever use on this channel on my discord so hop along to discord there's over 10,000 people there all willing to talk about Civ it's an amazing community oh what an intro let's just get cracking I don't think there's anything right now that could come in and interrupt the flow of this video and the series beginning but before we get started today a quick update on something concerning. Here is Ursa Bear. Ursa Bear was unfairly expelled from Oxford University's Civ 6 program. Ursa Bear now has 30,000 signatures, and with that magical powers were bestowed upon him to see the invisible. And Ursa Bear noticed something. An invisible, kind, helpful man. A man called Paul. Don't let Ursa Bear be distracted by the terrible spy Paul. Help Ursa Bear focus on Sankor. Will you subscribe today? Thank you. And back to the video. Turn one, where do we settle? Now, there's a couple of things on the map that I already can see. Firstly, we have a lot of grasslands tiles around us. More food, less production. I tend to prefer plain starts because these plains hills, if you settle on them, you get an extra production in the city center. Grassland hills, no such luck. We have a 2-2 tile right next to us, which is okay. However, the golden holy grail up there with the spice tile, it's the woodland hill fertile. Three food, two production, one gold and we have two of them. Settling right here would give me access to the 2-2 tile right now and it would also put both in range, one on the second ring of my territory and one on the third ring. However, I think I want to work this tile immediately and I think it is worth one tile of movement in order to pick up an extra food and an extra gold per turn. So I'm actually going to move to this rainforest tile. That puts me in range of the furs immediately. It puts me closer to this mountain range, which might help in case I want to potentially pick up a campus or a holy site or something. I, I will be picking up holy sites at some point for this strategy to work. To be honest, all strategies are fine here, but yeah, I'm moving away from the floodplains a little bit and I'm actually opening up a second opportunity to settle near the furs and the sugar up to the north. I'm pulling out of the range here. So yeah, I'm gonna move there. I know that not everyone would do that, but that's what I'm going to do. And there we go, the new, grand beautiful city of wash in Jeton. that's uh, i think how you pronounce that one right I'm, I'm trying to get better at my you know pronunciation of cities yeah it's like that isn't it wash in Jeton. It, it's it's almost a command it's like here is the Jeton. it's quite clean there's a bath there's a shower wash in it be clean and a tribal village up to my north immediately now that's all very fun we'll go and see what's in that in a second first thing i need to do in any game of heroes and legends build your monument first it's really important. You want to get heroes as quickly as you can. I am looking for one hero in particular. It's no surprise to say that I will be looking for Himiko. We're going to gamble a little bit to get Himiko. It works perfectly in our strategy. What is the strategy, you ask? Well, what we're going to do today is get some appalling yields and appalling map control, all with the command of envoys. 
City states are going to be important in this run, and we are going to generate some crazy yields from them. It all revolves around the American ability. Now, already we're getting more Diplo favor from the wild cards in my government, and we've got more wild cards where we should have diplomatic policy slots. That's all fun. Rough Riders are incredibly powerful Curasas. They, they're brilliant. P51 Mustangs actually make fighters really good. They're criminally underused, especially with 50% extra experience and flight range. It means you can get the strafe promotion with them very quickly. These are often like looked at as one of the useless unique units in the game. I thoroughly disagree. I say they're underused. Film studios, well, you can always go Tourism of America. Not really for me today. It's all about the Roosevelt Corollary. Oh, I'll put another L in that. You know what? That's going to have to do. Five combat strength on my home continent is an amazing ability. It's the old American ability. It means at the very least, barbarians will not trouble us. I love that. However, sending a city state. A trade route means that every envoy I give them counts as two. Remember this ability. Our entire nation is going to be on that ability. And there are two ways that we are going to make that work. Firstly, we need a religion. We're going to go for one of the lesser used religious options that turns our religion into an envoy printing machine. And I'm going to focus on trade route accumulation. I never really use commercial hubs as the core of district that I plan my empire around, unless I'm playing like Mali. But this is one of those times where America works really really well with commercial hubs. America, very rich country. And you can see commercial hubs and currency very quick to get to. Open up pottery, meet somebody to get writing, send a trade route, all things we're going to be doing. So I'm going to open up pottery. That should be fine. Well, hey, okay. Tribal village had a three population in it. That is up there with a three builder, which actually wouldn't have been very useful in this start and a relic. I'll always take a relic. Relic means quick early pantheon, but population means that I'm now working not just this amazing tile but also a slightly more tragic 2-1 tile but don't worry we'll, we'll get another 2-2 two, two tile very soon. I also discovered Void Singers. Now it's not going to be a surprise to anybody that this strategy is made better with Owls of Minerva. It syncs beautifully with the Rough Rider ability. Again you don't need it to make the strategy work. You don't need Himiko to make the strategy work but they help. I am going to preemptively pick up Armani. Now if, if Owls of Minerva pop up I want to obviously go for them but Armani means that we can suzerain city states quickly we can look to get as many free envoys as we can we can look to get era score and hopefully we can go for golden age if we can golden age right from the offset we can get a religion or we can get more settlers very very quickly i'm not going to pick amani right now uh, it's just in case something crazy happens just exploring around this coast one thing that is really good looks like this is all my continent sometimes you get a, a bit of an unfair continent split with rough rider you want as much of it to be your continent as you can admittedly you don't want all of it to be your continent because then you get bad luxury splits. Luxuries are always determined and put onto the map based on continent split but you do want a lot of your land and therefore you can you know have some fun. A three recon unit. Oh very nice very nice. I think I shall send you down to the south. There's pottery. Gonna get a couple of turns into writing as quick as we can. Commercial hubs are just such an important part of this. There's Hong Kong. There is the first meet. So Amani, in you go immediately. Let's suzerain that city-state as quick as we can. We've just met owls as well because Hattusa is directly to our south. Priority for me now, not to go Settler, but to go Heroic Tales. I want him a coat. The more I explore, the more chance I've got of finding her on continent splits when I become suzerain are on the city states there's lots of stuff that you can do but they're important we get her as quickly as we can i'm also going to go to foreign trade after code of laws and obviously put god king in the usual i want the pantheon i want it as quick as possible so as discussed before god king and discipline go in now survey is always useful if you've got a scout because you can level them up really quickly i totally get and respect that but having discipline and also the american bonus against barbarians that is too good a combo to miss out on. I'm actually thinking of bringing my scout in the other direction now. It's like a weird thing to do, but I'm going to get a lot of the map around Hong Kong and then Hattusa because obviously we got the first envoy there. So kind of good. Oh, Hattusa wants a trade route as well. And Hong Kong just wants three builder charges being put down. Oh, this is all falling so delightfully in line. Now just all we're going to do now is, is, is the Gizga Hill. I can get my words out. The game is going too well, which means that we're not going to get Himiko for ages and ages and ages and ages with the twins. Okay, twins are okay, but it's not Himiko. We're going to we're gonna go all in on this strategy. I know we could go Temple of Artemis. I know we could do lots of stuff. We're not going to. We are absolutely going to commit to this strategy as quick as we can. Earlier in the game, you do heroic tales, the better. Uh, there 
Where is Hong Kong? Yep, as discussed, it has given us a lot of the map. I was missed for tribal villages. Nope, absolutely hasn't appeared just yet. That's fine. Immediately, as fun as it is to keep Amani in Hong Kong, we're going to move you to Hattusa and do exactly the same thing for another two era score. Writing is on the edge of being boost completed, so I'm going to put a couple of turns now into astrology. Getting a holy site and a religion at some point is quite important for me, so we're going to try that. Huge amount of desert to our right. Looks like the land kind of ends in this direction, which is a bit of a shame. Arthur? King Arthur is okay, but it's not Himiko. Oh, we discovered Mulan sometime. That must have been, she must have been waiting in Hong Kong. This is what I mean though, about moving Amani around. Very handy for finding more heroes, but yeah, we're just, we're all in here. Come on, Hattusa, find us something fun. Find us something fun. Indonesia, that is, yeah, not what I expected, but sure, sample your hospitality. I'd love to. There's two era score. Looks like I found Sahara as well, which is great because that's the astrology boost. We found Sun Wukong. Okay, that's all fine. That's all fine, but it's not who we want. We did find Cardiff. Wow, that was, this is what I mean about about era score Himiko. Sorry, no, Amani. Amani is very, very powerful. A Eureka for archery in Cardiff. Interesting. Well, we'll finish getting right in quickly, then we'll go to currency. As I say, commercial hub is the priority for me. I need as many trade routes as I can, and we're now three turns off getting our first trader as well. Good that we've met Indonesia. They are a small pool of gold that we can be friends with. Minus four. If it's minus three or less, then I'll send them a delegation. But honestly, right now, I need to very much hang on to all of my gold. There's writing. Perfect. Currency time. Ah, the problem is every time I get a tech, it makes Heroic Tales 3 production more expensive. So you, are, you actually want to avoid getting tech for as long as you can. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, not who we need. Um, Not who we need at all. I realize I didn't move Amani over as well. Come on, to Cardiff now. All of these heroes, none of whom are the ones that I want. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, there's a barb camp, but look at this. My warrior, 35 strength when attacking the encampment. That is very, very good indeed. So we've got foreign trade now. That means that I could get a trader for 170 gold. Uh, I've also started to get a little bit of diplomatic favor. Again, you can do the whole thing where you buy people's diplo favor. I don't tend to do that personally, but it is a good strategy if you want to accelerate through the early game. But I'm going to just get a couple of gold up front so that I can then immediately get myself a trader. Let's take down this barbarian outpost. It's more than six towers away from my capital, uh, but it means I get two era score rather than three, but it's still two era score. It's very, very handy handy. Let's go early empire. I want that governor title. I want to join the owls. Oh, the owls. Every time you send a trade route to a city-state, you get one envoy with them. So here are our two options. Three gold per turn for Hong Kong, three gold per turn for Hattusa. But what's this? As long as I've got a trade route with a city-state, I get two envoys. Well, luckily for me, it also works by putting that onto the city-state before you then get the envoy from Hattusa. So watch, I've got one envoy with them at the moment. It'll put the trade route on and then it'll give me two envoys. And there's Cree. Honor to meet you. Yes, I'd love to know where your capital is. Hercules. It's a good way of finding heroes, this, by the way. If you keep moving Amani between cities, she'll eventually find something decent. Actually, I'm just going to put a few turns into mysticism. I'll get the Pantheon boost very soon. We've actually just discovered a land route to Cardiff now. That's really handy. It means I can now send a trade route there. And look, currency is boosted as well. Huzzah! Barb Camp is now destroyed. We can take that on next time. Come on, Heroic Tales. Come on. Give me something good. Give me Himiko. Oh, yeah. Cree doesn't like America. Funny about that, isn't it? Come on, come on, go. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Be a wolf. No. We're going to get every single hero before we get Himiko. I'm pretty sure we will. Oh, looks like there's a natural wonder hit. M Matt, Matt. It's got to be Matterhorn. <laughs> I love it when the game just gives it away. It's like, I'm not even going to try and hide what this wonder is. Era score here. Military tradition boosted. Celestial navigation boosted as well, apparently. I love when you get random boosts from those sort of things. And there's Matterhorn. Maui, we're going to find everyone. I swear. I swear to you, we will find everyone in this game apart from Himiko. Oh, Alpine training. Yeah, I forgot that about Matterhorn. Oh, my scout has been chasing this scout for years. I'll finally find you. Still, still on my continent, by the way. Both of these people are on my continent. That's uh, very intriguing for later. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How many are there? Twelve. I mean, how many more do we have to unlock before we get Himiko? What's going to happen is we'll find her and then someone will have already grabbed her and then we'll be like, oh, okay, go on. Lucky number 10. Lucky number 10. You know you want to give me Himiko. Just do it. There we go. Right. <laughs> It cost me about 15 turns longer than it needed to. Look at that ridiculous list. Okay, 
Let's pick up Himiko. We finally managed to pin that scout down as well. Oh, I'm desperately trying to get another high level scout. That was so much fun in that previous game that I did. So we're going to keep pushing that one. Mysticism is almost on the boosting point now. It's wonderful. I'll go back to early empire for a bit. I can also sell my Diplo favor, but only to Cree who denounced me, which is a bit annoying. Indonesia can't decide whether she likes me or not. She likes the fact I'm not on the coast. She hates the fact that I like city-states. So yeah, that, that last one may be a problem. My scout actually has Alpine training, so I'm not going to get Alpine. I'm going to get Ranger. It's actually really handy. Maybe we'll throw some more scouts out. Himiko has joined our cause. Wonderful. We have 17 out of 25 era score. Ideally, I would like to get a Golden Age. It would be a huge, huge improvement for me, and I can't really say no to that. We'll keep trying to find people, but I'm thinking the best thing Himiko can do is actually grab Cardiff. That would be worth another two era score, and then we could start levying army. That would give me some era score, which would be lovely as well. Hong Kong wants a Eureka for craftsmanship. That That is tempting as well. Let's get a builder going, because once six turns is gone, we'll be able to pick up things like animal husbandry quite quickly so that's that's pretty easy to do but oh actually should we do it in a different order check out the campus first it's the plus three campus that's what i need to get the era score for building it oh you know what maybe finishing astrology maybe that's the play here we still got 10 turns i could probably rush a holy site out and i've just realized there is a plus three there should we do that just to get the era score it's my it's my leading theory at the moment best bit about himiko absolute best bit movement is of a zero penalty to, in any terrain so she can just go whoo through all of that forest it's great more tribal villages i need as many of these as i can get each one is one era score which is a lovely thing eight turns now someone has claimed beowulf so it's slightly scary when you see heroes be claimed like that oh cardiff is going to do its best to block my movement here no no we got lucky on the gamble cardiff i don't have a trade route to but i can just use one to charge from himiko to pick cardiff up that's two era score we found Anansi. here is the Cree land and vatican oh there's another city state okay Okay, right, well, Himiko is going to go immediately over there. Are they thinking about it? I could try and war Kree. I could try and war Kree. I could just use all of these warriors and do a bit of a warrior rush. I think that's that's kind of taking away from strategy, though. We're going to play on this strategy, and we're going to just sort of have a total monopoly of city-states. I think that's what we're going to aim for today. So let's go Amani, move you through to Vatican, and then Himiko is going to follow shortly behind. Astrology is also boosted now. We've got, let's have a quick look at this, seven turns. Seven turns turns for this holy site i could do it if i just made sure i was working the most production i could oh it's gonna be close it's gonna be close cardiff luckily and hong kong are both giving me one extra production that what's in the tribal village sailing okay i can't say that i'm overwhelmed that looks like career or coupe one of the two. Oh yeah currency is in the classical era isn't it so i will get a little bit of era score from being in the classical era and i get some era score from having a pantheon actually so there's more to come Maybe I don't need to rush this holy site through. Oh, we'll keep an eye on that. Well, what pantheon do we want? I want a pantheon that's going to be all about my strategy. People get so... And actually, this is worth uh, always bringing up in, in, in playthroughs every now and then. A lot of the people that comment will go, Oh, you missed a Temple of Artemis star. Or you missed a certain Wanderer, Etamananki, or stuff like that. Oh, I see these stars. But often, the best way you will do well in Civ is if you have a strategy. So mine is Total City State Monopoly. And you stick to it. Don't get distracted by the shiny things. Because, yes, Manankey is always good in a game. You can always go and conquer it later if you really want it. What helps me with trade routes and city-states? Well, actually, city patron goddess would be quite interesting. 25 production towards districts in cities without a specialty district. That means I could always rush through that first uh, commercial hub very quickly. Lady of the Reeds and Marshes is relatively entertaining if you've got a lot of marsh. I don't know if I do. Hmm, little bit, but not like an overwhelming amount. And no desert flood plain as well. A couple of cows so goddess of hunt is always a good option but mm, a little bit of appeal i could get a little bit of extra faith no i'm actually gonna get city patron goddess it's not an option i always go for but it actually will help to get me that religion really quickly two religions have uh, not religion trade routes sorry two religions gone already feed the world choral music if that indonesia has got a religion that is slightly problematic but we shouldn't be too it's, it's not too much of a problem moderate flood that had no yields given it's quite boring 
I have one envoy in Vatican. I must have done a quest for them. I totally missed that, but that's okay. Himiko, can you just give me a free envoy there? Oh, thank you so much. Feels like a little bit of a waste of Himiko at the moment, but it's okay. I'm just looking for all places that tribal villages could be. We need all the era school we can. I'm keeping my warrior back as well. I do not trust these Cree scouts. I really don't. So I want like a little bit of a little bit of defense, just just in case, just in case. You've noticed that Pantheon pushed the holy site into this era as well, which is quite handy. I might leave it on one turn and I might do it in the next era, depending on whether we need it or not. But Himiko doesn't need to use an extra charge on Vatican right now. There's Armani, and here is the classical era. So we don't get era score, of course, from... Oh, Simpad's already been claimed. Simpad's always claimed really early. But we won't get the era score from Vatican because Cree were already suzerain to them, which is a little bit of a problem, but that's fine. There's six warriors here. Oh, it's very tempting to use Vatican. You know what? I'm going to just leave a couple of envoys in Vatican. Himiko has another ability where if you've already got suzerainship over a city-state, you can get 50 faith. So I'm going to just drop two envoys here and then move Amani on. Just gives me a little bit of faith, which helps to pick her up next time. Uh, what we want to do is get ourselves as quickly as we can to about 33 to 35 faith per turn. That means we can always afford Himiko every single era. There's currency, by the way. That's all wonderful. I'm going to let the holy site finish. That will give me the three era score to get me a golden age. And then we can actually get our own religion pretty quick, which should be awesome. And here you go. Holy sight complete. Three era score. One turn left. Golden Age. It's a beautiful thing. It's an absolutely beautiful thing. Himiko's charm. Well, bam. That means we will have four envoys in Vatican when I move Himiko onwards, which I shall now do. Reassign you back somewhere that will give me another sort of little bit of visibility. Let's go back to Hong Kong for a bit. Or do we go to Cardiff? Let's go to Cardiff. That's fine. I'm not going to do a warrior rush, by the way. If, 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 if Vatican and Cardiff move all of their troops into, say, mana arms or something more powerful, then I might be tempted. Then I might be tempted, but until that happens, I'm like, no, let's behave ourselves. Dedication. This run is all about religion. So we're going to go Exodus of the Evangelists. That gives my missionaries extra charges and movement. And we also get four profit points per turn. That means I go from having one point per turn to five points per turn. Really, really good. And it'll also give me more faith per turn later on as well. That's another city state, isn't it? That's absolutely another city state. All right, Himiko, onwards you go. Production's interesting, but I like the gold per turn better. Discipline is still very handy, so we'll just keep that as a government for now. Improve three tiles. I'd love it if this builder finished pretty quick. We're going to go and improve the furs. I'd love it if someone would trade this Diplo favor with me. Oh, it's burning a hole in my pocket, but that's okay. There's Coupe. Hello, Coupe. Honored to meet you. Yes, I'd love to sample your hospitality. That's not their capital, which means their capital is elsewhere. Which city state is this? Candy. Oh, candy's a good one to have. Candy is a very good one to have because candy means that we can get relics. Animal husbandry. Uh, there are some horses near Hong Kong. Okay, that's not too bad. Now, our expansion has been limited a little bit here. It has been limited a little bit here by going so heavily for city-states and visibility. But this is where we start to pull this back around. You'll notice that we have a lot of faith city-states, some science, and some production. You kind of want to keep an eye on this and you want to make sure that you're getting districts that are going to be useful to you and that will help later on. I also want to make sure that we go for the diplomatic quarter as quickly as we can. It's a wonderful district that means that we get a lot more envoys. Hang on, how am I getting horses? Oh, from bonus sources. Yes, Atusa is giving me horses. So actually, I want to discover uh, bronze working as quick as I can. And then I get more resources that I can sell people. Excellent stuff. You know what? I'm going to just keep working on infrastructure. So commercial hubs is plus four. That's the commercial hub that I want to get. That gives me the era score. But at the moment, that's going to be quite tricky to get. I could aqueduct over here for a good industrial zone. So I don't really want to ruin that if I can help it. But equally, focusing on the important things. We're going for gold, not necessarily crazy industry. So I'll put the commercial hub on that hill. The main reason for that, by the way, is it won't flood. Because as soon as I put it on floodplain, it's going to flood almost immediately. And I'm going to regret it very quickly. Now, we could be waiting with this early game rush until we've unlocked political philosophy and we've got Diplomatic League, but uh, alas, we don't have that luxury. Actually, look at that. Early Empire is boosted beyond the point of six pop, so we'll just get that in. Whenever you go to a new era, you get a bit of a tech and culture boost towards techs that you haven't already got. If you're a little bit behind in era, so it's always worth keeping an eye on that one. 
But once the AI figures out what Diplo favor is, once it decides that it wants my luxury, then we'll get some gold. I can use that gold to buy the settler. So that that is is okay. We're gonna get our settlers from gold. And as you can see, look at this. Cree have gone for a profit point as well. So it looks like we're gonna have lots of opposing religions in this area. That doesn't look good for the survivability of the AI, does it? Let's pop in owls now. Wonderful. So we actually get an extra economic policy slot. And I'll just whap urban planning in for now. That's okay. Okay, and how long has my trader got until it renews? Only 14 turns. Good to know that. That is a very useful thing indeed. Oh, no one liked that. No one liked that. Never mind. I'll do some trading before people realize how much they hate me. Get 55 gold for those horses. I could sell the luxury or for quite a little bit. Yeah, Indonesia will give me loads for furs there. Perfect. Oh, you know what? Uh, you know what? What I think I just did is, uh, yeah, they still value Diplo favor for like nothing, don't they? Yeah, don't want to do that. I'm, I'm being fat. I'm being fat. I'm going to gift it back. Don't want to say that I'm abusing that bug. So as soon as I send a trade route to people, now I'll get an envoy. And that stacks with my ability to get two envoys when I have a trade route. So every time I send a trade route to a city state, I now get two envoys with them. It's very, very useful to keep an eye on this. Kamasi, by the way, is definitely a city state that we will be looking for here. In two turns, we're going to pick up candy. I'm just trying to work out if it's worth putting extra charges into candy. I think it probably is because I want to hold on to this city state later. So I'm actually going to wait two turns, let Armani finish, and then I'll get a bit of faith from doing that. And as we all know, you got to have faith. Oh, Coupe had actually levied the army in candy. Even better. That gives me two error score for doing it. Just picked up mysticism very quickly. I'm going to hold on to that envoy. I want to wait until I can use it uh, in a double up thing. But okay, like 23 gold per turn now. Now that we're getting stuff that people want to trade, now it's looking a little bit better. I just need Cree to stop denying announcing me so I can sell them the Diplo favor because they really do like the sound of the Diplo favor. Um, okay, right, candy. Yeah, we're going to put two envoys in here now. Just gives me a good chunk of extra faith. Actually, that's worth 75 faith now. Oh, very handy. And then what we'll do is we'll think about sending Himiko out to go and find a rel. I mean, annoyingly, I found two natural wonders already before I found candy. Such is the way, by the way. You you'll never be able to optimize candy. It's physically impossible. Here's a quarry. That's the masonry boost. And I actually don't want to get craftsmanship. I want to put another improvement down. So what I'm going to do is instead of choosing a civic, I'm going to have to force end turn here. By doing this, I actually accumulate a bit of an excess of culture that flows through to the next turn, but I can avoid picking up craftsmanship until I get the boost. Why am I so desperate for that? Well, Hong Kong will give me an envoy if I do that, and it's important that I get all the envoys that I can. All of these city-state quests, by the way, we want to be getting all of this stuff. Interestingly, if you do this little uh, trick, bug, whatever you want to call it, it thinks you finish something every turn and you can keep changing your government every turn. Quite handy. Is it an exploit or is it just a technique? I'll, I'll leave you to come up with that answer yourself. But uh, there you go. There's another envoy in candy. Beautiful. I could be using Himiko, by the way, on Hatusa because that's where my trade is going and I would be getting double. That would be perfectly fine. I, I would agree with that as being a very good strategy. Shift enter, force end turn. I'm just lazy. So that's why I'm doing it uh, like so. There is the quarry. There's the third improvement. There's craftsmanship. <laughs> Cheeky. Actually, I'm going to build my Sattler because I get a card for it. This is always something that I, it, it's always worth having a look at. If you can get a production boost, it's well worth building that rather than buying it. Because I can buy a Sattler for 320 gold or a shrine for 280 gold, but I can't boost the production of the building of granaries or shrines. So I might as well use production on the Sattler and use my gold for this sort of stuff. So I'm going to save my gold up two turns, buy a market. That'll give me a trade route. Uh, and in that case, I'm going to want to get Sattler production. Uh, we'll double up by taking out the two gold per turn. Feels a bit annoying to do that, but I think it's worth it. it means I get more production towards that Sattler quick as I can. And Himiko is now going to try and find another natural wonder. Find more players, find more people to trade with. Just do all of the lovely things. The state workforce, we can finally get a good governor in my capital. I want to go and see what's behind the Cree lines. Oh, not much. Okay, we, th this continent is going to get a bit packed. We actually have a really nice chokehold here. If I can settle all of this land, maybe that Coupe getting up here, I think we're going to have a really, really good time. Although Coupe is not on my continent, so, you know, they're on America. America! Oh no. But I don't get a bonus. A <laughs> bonus? <laughs> What is with me today? I don't get a bonus from fighting in America. It's not my continent. I changed my name back, by the way. I wasn't going to wind everyone up too badly. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was a joke, okay? 480 gold for a market. Oh, that's expensive. Five uh, turns for a settler seems much more reasonable. Come on, I need gold from people now. That's 70 gold. I could trade six of my gold per turn away. I'm gonna do that because it's much more important that I just get this trader as soon as I can. So, yep, there's the market. A bit more gold per turn from that. The trader is 195 gold. Here's the governor. I'm tempted to go Pingala just for a bit of culture. Culture is very important because culture means that we unlock more envoys on the civic tree. But I also do want to rush mathematics as quickly as possible as well. So, I mean, either way, all roads point to Pingala. So we're going to pop into Washington. Let's get my government. I would like Diplomatic League as quickly as I can get it. 143 gold. How much do I have to give away for that? Quite a bit. Yeah, no, the world won't do a trade like that with me. I just want this trader as fast as possible, but I'm having to just rush this settler. Oh, Hattusa's been taken. That is the presence of an enemy. Armani. Well, that means I'm not getting horses per turn. Unfortunately, for Indonesia, I have a trader. So if I put my spare envoy, which I've been keeping for this very reason, I get two envoys and uh, yeah, it's mine again. You don't want to play this game with me. You really do not. There's my profit, by the way, as well. There's bronze working, which means Hattusa is now giving me iron as well. I like that. I like that a lot. I can trade both of these things for a lot of money. And I'm going to, yeah, send six of my gold per turn away so I can get 200 up front in order to then get my trader. It's all about momentum, Siv. quicker I do this, the better. Keep an eye on Vatican City, by the way. Activating a great person spreads religious pressure. I can't, unfortunately, use it with my first great person because I have no religion. So you want to do things that give you more trade routes. More trade routes equals more envoys. So anything that gives me envoys, which is getting Himiko back in, using candy, using heroic relics, reliquaries is a really good choice for this, but that's not what I'm doing immediately. This is the one I want. Religious unity. Plus one envoy at each city state when it first adopts this religion. So because I have the ability to send trade routes and I get two envoys each time, just by spreading my religion, I can give a city-state two extra envoys on top of everything else. Oh yeah, it's uh, very, very good. Um, also, one fun thing you can do with Himiko is you can do a little bit of exploring and go, hey, you know what? That's about as much as we're going to find on this island. Apologies, but um, your time on this earth has come to a close. Delete the unit early. Bam, there you get the epic of Himiko. So I have two culture per turn, which is nice. 18 tourism, which is nice, but mainly six faith because it has been tripled. It's not as good as your regular relics for faith, but I've now gone from nine faith per turn to 14.9, which is very handy because I need to get a thousand as quickly as I can. And then I could summon her back for another, how many charges has she got? Eight envoys, which is pretty good. Well, there you go. We can put another trader over to Hong Kong now. Very exciting because not only do I get one extra trade route envoy from Alza Minerva, but I get two because I am Teddy. So bam, there is four envoys in this city state now. And you know what I'm going to do? I know I'm saving up for Himiko. I still really want her, but I will be treating myself to a shrine and a missionary because then I can go one, two spreads, spread my religion to both these city states and get another two envoys, which means I'm on six and seven. It's a very good strategy, this one. First settler is now finished. You can see actually there's a ton of iron to my north but I'd like to go and see if we can get things like the gypsum the sugar another copy of furs so I think we want to be sending our settler north but admittedly I also want to send a settler to the south I want to just go and nab some of this territory around the pass and I also want to be able to send trade routes to Vatican and Cardiff so settling based on that sort of thing is just as important actually I realize if I get a great merchant early I don't have to get a missionary do I or I, can, I mean I could spread my religion manually using holy site prayers but I mean Marcus Crassus will give me a lot of extra religious ability and spreading with Vatican oh my goodness this is the best tactic ever commercial hub investment let's just rush this let's do it let's let's absolutely go crazy on great people points the trading post is now completed in Hattusa. I'm hoping that means I can chain a trader over to Cardiff now and take this one over. It's going to work like that? Yes, it will. I mean, that is a trade route and a half. What? What? This is one of those things where you just have to say, don't ask, just accept. Anyway, we've got one envoy there, which means we'll get another two. 
and bam, Cardiff is on the side. So all five city-states that we found at the moment are all suzerained and happy. One of the priorities I've got to do actually is making sure that I put a settlement on the coast and get some boats out so we can explore the rest of the map. We don't want to leave exploration to everybody else. We want to find all the city-states, make sure that we get as much from them as possible. But I mean, you can see just the, the capacity of this particular strategy. It's quite good. Where's my favorite card? Here we go. Merchant Confederation plus one gold from each of my envoys at City States. Just um, keep that one in mind for later. And another gold for gold per turn deal just to get to 280 so I can quickly buy the shrine as fast as possible. Four faith per turn is a lovely thing. Spreading my religion is a lovely thing. I just want to get my thousand faith as quickly as I can and Himiko will come back onto the field and be very very helpful for everyone involved. Oh, I keep expecting the land to go on further than it does. Such a shame. Keep an eye on these Indonesian missionaries. I absolutely have the right to declare war immediately on Indonesia if they insist on spreading their religion to me. Disapprove of that. I disapprove of that heavily. I will not stand for it in this game. Oh, that one project almost entirely did about half of Marcus's great people points. That's a lovely thing. Vatican is gonna, we could in theory get lucky with a couple of great people here and we could just eliminate Indonesia's religion just purely from Vatican bombing? I mean, it's tempting. It's very, very tempting. Eventually, I'd quite like to settle near Sahara, just again, for influence in this area of the map, but also for the era score. So I'm just thinking about where best to settle on this front. There is a Plains Hill by this rainforest that would give my city center a little bit more capacity, so I'm tempted to grab that. One extra uh, production is cool. I mean, actually, Marcus could go and, you know, bomb Cardiff over in this direction a little bit. Yeah, we'll go and uh, do that. Oh, Indonesia got Stonehenge. That's why they have had such a good rush that sort of makes sense classical era excellent okay my capital is lacking housing and amenities right now so i'm very tempted to just go classical republic unless something pops up that's better it's just it's just the better option so we're going to go for that right now that's fine so we are producing settlers we are urban planning i can get four extra gold per turn that's wonderful we're going to get two more diplo favor because of my wild card policies we love to see that and charismatic leader and diplomatic league both go in we're getting two more points per turn and when we put our first envoy in it counts for two. Oh, this is lining up so well we love it we love to see it there's more land to the south that's exciting let's go and find that land to the south um theology is where we're headed now i'd like to get my worship building i'd like to get my temple there's a lot of stuff that we'd like to get but those all would be good things um try not to trade any luxuries when it's not in the quick deals or basically on your turn because the ai will offer you something that you think is a good deal and then you offer it to everybody and you're like oh wait that wasn't a good deal actually in this case it did prove to be a good deal but look it's it's, it's always worth changing Checking. Anyone want to buy this yet? No one wants the Diplo favor and it's so tempting to buy everyone's Diplo favor. I'm not doing it. I'm being responsible. City number two. I've waited to turn 66 to do this. That is absolutely appalling. But there we go. Booston. The city of Booston. <laughs> I can hear the Americans in chat. Again, it's all about trade routes. That's what we want to go for. Um, the commercial hub can be put on this road over in this direction. I'm actually going to just see if we can nab a little bit of territory in this direction. So yeah, we'll go one, two. It's very expensive to do that. Um, actually, I shouldn't have done that. I absolutely shouldn't have done that because I'm just about to get Marcus, aren't I? Ugh. So as I was saying very logically before, but the one thing you would not do is buy tiles when, you know, of course, Marcus is, is on the way to do that. That would be a silly and pointless thing to do, wouldn't it? <laughs> It'd be absolutely terrible. Oh dear, let's get a monument. Let's just, let's just get it going. Look, you saw nothing. Nobody saw anything. Oh, Buenos Aires. Amazing. I think I can move Amani away from Candy now. I can. Yeah, great. So Amani, make your way back down. Let's make another city-state a friend. And as you can see, they're all industrial city-states. That's really intriguing. I am now thinking that apprenticeship is definitely the way to go here. I'm just going to lean into whatever the game is giving me. Don't don't fix your strategy too hard. Oh, I settled too close. I don't mind lying, to be fair. Am I really going to settle near her? I probably will settle near her. Oh, the 30 favor is tempting, but I will actually just take the grievances instead. One more project is gone. Okay, Marcus, I'm going to pick up next turn. Brilliant. Let's get another settler going. I need to start expanding out now. Here is Marcus. Right, immediately we're going to move you to Boston. Boston. Oh, Lynn. Oh, I like military city-states. 
very handy indeed. Those help you to produce settlers. So if I got an encampment or I got a diplomatic quarter in Washington, that would help a lot. Oh, Diplo Favor's being sold now. Excellent. Let's bankrupt the AI. Just using that gold to buy all the infrastructure that my production isn't able to pick up. But let's get the builder first, then the granary, just whilst these settlers are being produced. I get 60 gold. I annex a tile into my territory. But most importantly, Vatican says... Oh, 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 my founded or majority religion. I, okay, I think because I founded the religion, this still works. Oh, it certainly does. <laughs> Excellent. Hong Kong just picked up another two envoys and Hattusa and Cardiff. They're going to do exactly the same thing in a second. Boston now follows my religion as well. When you've got Hattusa, it's always a little annoying when you actually build a mine on your strategic for the first time. because You don't actually get any of that because you just lose the bonus from Hattusa. But never mind. That was a boost that I wanted for a city state. They want a great general. They want an engineer. All of these things. I think I should be able to get a catapult trade route to Buenos Aires. Oh, that'll be a challenge, but I reckon we can probably pick that up in a second. Oh, Hattusa is stopping me from grabbing this tile. This is the tile I want, namely because it would spread religion to Indonesia and it would annoy them. That's a Oh no, we've already spread religion to Indonesia. We've already annoyed them. Excellent. Round or salvo number two. Oh, bam. Oh yeah, Reformed Church. Six cities already spread to my religion, but Hattusa and Cardiff just picked up another two envoys. They are not going anywhere nowhere. Perfect. Buenos Aires will be picked up in a second because I'm about to get an envoy in two more turns and then Amani can move on from there. We don't actually mind, by the way, once the city-state has actually, you know, gained my religion. If it gets taken over afterwards, we don't really mind. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually leave a little marker on the city-states just so that we remember which ones we have claimed the three envoy from. It's going to be a little bit confusing. I appreciate having the markers, but it's for a reason. Oh no, I lost candy. I lost candy. They want a great engineer. Hmm, 2,000 gold. I probably could rock up 2,000 gold and start building some wonders. Oh, terrible idea. Marcus has got one extra charge and I'm actually going to hold on to that for a second. I might be able to deploy over towards Vatican and Candy a little bit later. We'll see if we can get away with that. Oh, Indonesia really wants my Diplo favor. Look at that. Another nine gold per turn. Yeah, I, as long as I'm producing seven of it per turn, I don't need to hang on to it. It's it's fine. It's it's three. Three resource. Away you go. It's wonderful. Um, Now, Washington. Where do I want to settle next? Oh, it's very tempting to push down south. I think I probably would end up doing better though if I settled towards some luxury. So we'll go to this desert. Settling on the desert itself would give me an era score. I could go for the coast and start getting some boats out. That's not a bad idea as well. Oh, there's a lot of competing things here. There are a lot of competing plans. I'm going to go settle on that hill actually. And it's Grassland Hill, but it would give my city center some gold. Act as a nice canal. There's a reef there. There's a lot of stuff uh, pulling me in that direction. So yeah, let's head in this direction now. It is just a shame that Washington is the one producing all these settlers right now because Pingala's extra science and culture that we could be getting down there is definitely being suppressed. But never mind. Buenos Aires, here's an envoy. It counts as my first, so I actually get two, which is wonderful. I get a couple of era score. Buenos Aires is very happy. It makes my cities nice and happy as well, but not to last because Amani now goes to Wulin. Hong Kong now has swordsmen. Just keep an eye on that. That's uh, an interesting revelation. <laughs> oh, the era's come up really quickly. Oh, I need 58 era score to get into a golden age. It's 21. Strangely, I don't know if that would happen. I tell you what I do need, though. I need Himiko before the end of the era, and that will be close. I need a lot more faith per turn, actually. Irrigation means that I can now improve this sugar, which is wonderful. Helps Washington to grow a little bit more. We like the sound of that. Anyone want sugar? Oh, the world would love sugar. Look at that. Yes, yes, gold, 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 gold. An Indonesian missionary seems to have appeared in my land. I'm entirely sure I, I like that. Luckily, I've got a warrior on nearby to come and uh, nip that in the bud if it proves to be an issue. Oh, don't do this. Let's not play this game. Don't like this game at all. Oh, 44 gold per turn. Don't mind if you do. 
Drama and Poetry has been given to me, which is lovely. I still like these two. Diplo cards, they're doing me nicely. Settlers, Urban Planning, Canavasaries. Hmm, I've just made another Settler. I don't like the way that I'm losing population in my capital, so I'm actually going to change this to Builders. Ilkum is always very, very handy. I'm not going to get Himiko in the Classical Age, which is a bit of a problem. I just was underneath the Faith Generation I would have needed to pick her up. I've got five turns left, about 23 Faith coming in per turn. And it's about 110, 120 going to come in. It'll be just, just short, which is very annoying. Alas, oh, there are heroic relics in the game, but they're very expensive. I mean, admittedly, Indonesia has just given me all that gold. I could probably claim it back with some Diplo favor. So hang on. Do you want, do you want to just do a deal? It's expensive, but in terms of giving me faith per turn, that's another six per turn. So, oh man, I feel like if I'd got that before, that would have been good. 150. Oh, it's going to be right on the edge of <laughs> whether or not we could get that. Theology. Maha body temple, just regular temples. That's all lovely. City number three, though. I have a second Boston. I that's not the first time that's happened. To, hmm. You can be bossed off. <laughs> There's <laughs> some, some weird stuff going on in this game. I have no idea what's happening. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalek, Skeptical Bear, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, Rom88, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boyzoro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedged, Mushkin Mandeltort, Ezri Dax, Debel Time, Shule, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Clint Hennis, Dr. Bobby, Polar Wallabear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye!